I am the original. I am the best. I care not what those journals say. They're wrong. They're wrong, 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 wrong. I am the original. Aren't I? I... I I fingered the Pokeballs attached around my wrist, my Pokemon, my partners, my faithful companions, my best friends. Through the thick and thin, we'd gone through the perils of Johto and Decanto. And now, here I was, standing here at the entrance to an old, weird mansion. I had been mesmerized by the beauty of a Ninetales I battled against on my way over here. I wanted one. I had to have one. The kind trainer told me that Vulpix could be found at the Canabar Mansion, which was just about to be destroyed. It was very dangerous, but I'm getting that Vulpix, whether that stupid mansion wanted me there or not. I double-checked my party, making sure that everyone was set and ready to go. My Affaranglair, Beadrill, Noctowl, Umbreon, and Rapidash all seemed ready. But there was the question of whether or not he was ready. I bit my lip, having been told by my friend of the journals that were scattered around the mansion that he had pointed out connections to my dearest boy and I. Of course, I denied every single thing he pointed out. I mean, I had to. My Pokemon were practically my children, and what parent would not try to protect their children? But sadly, even I could ignore everything. I decided to keep him in his Pokeball for this trip, even if his psychic powers were good against a poisoned Pokemon that practically ruled the place. I took the ball and shoved it down deep in my backpack. I made sure I had plenty of potions, antidotes, burn heals, and everything else. After finishing with satisfaction in my stores, I slung the bat across my back and called out my Rapidash. I kindly asked her if she would light up the dark mansion for me, and... The Pokemon whined and then flared brighter. I smiled and thanked her, guessing that that was a yes. I'm so tired. Where were we? Where, where, where are we? I, I can't tell. It's dark and stuffy. It's hot too. It's just too hot. I don't like it. Why can't I see? This feeling. Why do I have it? Why do I suddenly feel so ice cold? Where are we? I felt the Pokeball rattle in my backpack. Considering the bag was loaded with stuff, I was surprised I could even feel it. My boy must be distressed. <laughs> I frowned. I, I knew he didn't like being in dark places yet. Still, I, I, I did this to him. He'll be upset, but not as much as he would if he were out. The, the lesser of two evils, I suppose. And I, I simply couldn't leave him in a simple storage system. He'd live. I slid my Pokedex out of my pocket, looking for the picture of Vulpix on the screen, studying it. I scanned it, I scanned over its info. I'd be ready to face this thing once I found it. I even had a brand new Ultra Ball in my pocket, ready to toss at this damn fox. Vol! My gaze snapped upon from the screen, my eyes widened, my prize had come to me, it seemed. Who was to complain about that? The Vulpix spotted me with pinpricked eyes. It took off with a desperate hail. Grinning, I readied my fairly Gator's Pokeball and took off after it, my feet pounding against the moldy carpet. Ugh, I, I feel sick. I have a headache. Is there anything for that? Maybe, maybe something for the humans. Maybe it would work for me too. I, I'm not too different from them after all, no matter how much it pains me to say with some of them in the world. We're moving. Ah, the sick feelings are getting stronger. The air smells familiar. Are, are we in a cave? No, 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 no. Th this isn't a cave. It, it feels too strange to be a cave. Let's see. Molten air. It, it smells stale. We're enclosed somewhere. It, it's too dry to be a, a cave. Air isn't dusty. Th there's ash. Something. Something's burning. Something's recently been burned. That explains the heat, I guess. But there's something behind that. It's it's all too familiar. It practically drills itself into my mind and into the fear, it seems. Where are we? Am I in a bag? It's, it's 
something I shouldn't see? Why, why not? I'm strong enough to handle- I'm strong enough to handle anything! I chased the Vulpix through the dark. All of a sudden, it took a sharp turn into a room. Rapidash and I rushed into the room, my partner's bright flames penetrating into shadows that lurked in every corner. It was almost eerie now that I think about it. I turned to the far side of the room. Vulpix was trapped against the wall, hissing and spitting. I frowned, and water would just scare it more. I, I knew. So, with a quick ember from my powerful Rapidash and a flick of the wrist, Vulpix was safely inside my Ultra Ball. I walked over to the Pokeball, tucking it into the pocket of my bag. I'd stick it into my PC once I get it back outside. I slung my backpack off, reaching down to the side of my pocket to grab an escape rope. That's when I saw it. The journal my friend had told me about. Why was it laying on the ground through someone had pissed some old book against the wall? Though, I never know what was in that book, though. I, I had to know. My curiosity suddenly lurked to the front of my mind, like a shadow on a sunny day. That it was there, there's no getting rid of it. Even though, I practically promised myself and my boy I wouldn't. I reached forward and pulled the book and for forward myself. Being extremely careful, <laughs> I, with the careful yellowed pages, I bit my lip gently, turning to the front of the book, and I read aloud. July 5th, Guana, South Africa. We discovered a new species of Pokemon. It seemed that all the members of the species are now gone. Sadly, this w makes studying the new Pokemon very, very hard. Luckily, we recovered some samples of the Pokemon's DNA. They appear to be recent. Have these Pokemon recently gone extinct, or are they actually still alive? Why does this sound so familiar? It's so... Painfully familiar. I can feel it in the back of my mind. Why can't I remember? I turned a page, surprised to find that a few pages had been torn out to where the book was laying. Finding the scattered pages of tiny bits of paper, I frowned. It was there's no salvaging it. I sighed and continued to read. July tenth, Guana, South Africa. Due to its supposed kitten-like appearance. We have decided to name this new Pokemon Mew. I smiled. Mew was a very cute name. Mew. Mew, Mew, Mew. That name is so easy to say, it rolls right off the tongue as easily as my own name. I can feel it burning in my mind. I know that name. Why? Why do I know this name? I turned to the next few pages, finding them torn out or simply destroyed to the point where the next few lines of text were readable. Finally, I came to something useful. February 6, Cinnabar Canto. The test on the Mew proved to be successful. We have cloned a new specimen, however, the limited DNA will not work. Professor Blaine offered some of his own blood for the research. While a clone will not be what we had hoped for, being very little the original new. It will have to suffice. We have created, or have decided to call this creature, Mewtwo. Mewtwo appears to be rather powerful. We don't, however, know the extent of its powers. I frowned and bit my lip. My friend had lied to me. He hadn't wanted me to read this. He had pointed out small similarities that were painfully real. My Mewtwo was really a science experiment? No, 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 no. I remember now. I remember it all now. I don't remember this. I, I, I refuse to believe that I'm just some sort of science experiment. I had emotions. I have thought. I had to suffice. I believe them. I believe those stupid humans. I believe they cared. I am as stupid as them for believing in their charity. They care nothing about my life. I just had to suffice, though. I am almost shaking now. My poor Mew, too. This... Is this what really he was intended for? My bottom lip quivered. I choked back to tears, my Mew, too. What would have happened to you if he had not escaped? What fate would he have come to if not for me now? I read on. I must know what the end of the world had been if he didn't. September 1st, Cinnabar Canto. Mewtwo is far too powerful. All attempts to weaken its 
vicious tendencies have failed. I flopped through the remaining pages, finding only blank paper. I threw the book against the wall and slung my backpack over my shoulder. I jumped my rapidash into the back, trusting her to take me to the entrance. I, I, I just had to get out. I remember now. Oh, so vividly. But, no matter how many times run it through my head, it just seems like a story. I am you too. I am myself, but I am no one's clone. I realize I'm pushing into my dear trainer's thoughts, but I don't care. It's better than someone knows what I'm thinking. I have to get out. I am the original. I am the best. I care not what the trolls say. They're wrong, 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 wrong. I am the original. Aren't I? No matter how many times I say it, I can't convince myself it's true. I am the original. Get out of my head!